and welcome to Economics in You. I am your host, Mr. Samuelson. Today we are looking at a couple of different ways of running a business, sole proprietorships and partnerships. So let's take a look. Let's first look at sole proprietorships. A sole proprietorship is a business which is owned by a single person, just one. One person owns and operates that business. The proprietor um, has many roles and has to do many things within their company, especially when it's a startup. Maybe when it's a little bit larger, they could hire people to come in and do some of this work for them. Um, but they have to be pretty successful in order for them to be able to do that. Most sole proprietorships start with just one person and maybe an employee or a family member that can help them. Um, this is actually most businesses in the United States. Many, many, many businesses are run this way. In the US, there are about 18 million sole proprietorships. And when you drive through the streets of town and you look around and you see businesses up there, unless it's a, a chain that you're familiar with, um, chances are it's a sole proprietorship that you are looking at. There are plenty of advantages to starting and running a sole proprietorship. Um, you get to be your own boss. Nobody is going to tell you what you got to do with your business. Now, some people might tell you what you should do with your business so that you don't fail, but ultimately the decisions are yours. You can shape your business in any way that you want. If you want to start a business that all it does is smell, uh, sell replacement parts for model trains, you can do that and good luck to you. Um, sole proprietorships also uh, are a advantage because the proprietor receives all the rewards of their success. If they are wildly successful, they don't have to share that extra cash with anybody. It is all theirs. Additionally, in a sole proprietorship, your taxes are usually pretty low. We went over this with the uh, last lesson, where in a sole proprietorship, you get to deduct all your business expenses, only pay taxes on your profits, and that tax rate is... Uh, um, reduce significantly because of those business deductions. Now, some disadvantages. Um, getting a sole proprietorship up and running is extremely hard work. Uh, the standard work week in the United States for most people is a 40-hour work week. Uh, sole proprietors, they don't work 40-hour work weeks. They work 60, 70, 80, 90-hour weeks, especially in the first couple of years when they're getting, getting their business up and running. It's extremely hard work and very time consuming to do so. Sole proprietors also have something called unlimited liability. Unlimited liability uh, is, when we talk about risk, this is what we're talking about. What this means is that any debts that you accrue as a business, that is if you uh, take out a large loan in order to purchase a building to put your bakery in, okay? You got a bakery, that's your new startup business, you take out a loan to do so, but the bakery is not successful and the bakery goes out of business. And now you owe money on that loan. Well, that money has to be paid and the bank will come for your personal belongings to do that. Your house, your car, your jewelry, all of that can be seized to cover business losses. So if you're going to start a small business and you've got a good idea, that's great and that's wonderful, but always be aware of this very important disadvantage because it could cost you your house if you don't do it well. Another way to run a business is through a partnership, which has advantages and disadvantages of its own. What a partnership is at its root is a business that is owned by two or more people. So it's like that sole proprietorship, except for you're not gonna do it by yourself, you're going to do it with somebody else. Two people or three, or five, or six, or 10, or 12, are going to sit down and come to an agreement, get together and start this business together. That is a partnership. And it is a uh, legal agreement to share responsibilities and to share profits. Usually the people who put in the most money to get the thing started are going to ha own a bigger share of the uh, business. But maybe the person who puts in the most money isn't doing as much work so it does balance out on other factors as well. Um, they also agree on how to divide the assets if the partnership ends. Assets are basically money, 
once it comes down to it. Uh, building that can be sold off, inventory that can be sold off, equipment that can be sold off. What is the, going to be the total division of the money that's left once the entire business is sold off and it's done? Advantages of partnerships. Well, partnerships allow people to focus on their area of expertise and or interest. If you've got three people involved in a partnership and one really loves record keeping, that can be your accountant, that can be your bookie, that can be the person who sits down and does the numbers for your business. You've got somebody else who really likes interacting with people. Well, they're gonna be up front. They're gonna be interacting with your customers and managing customer relationships. Maybe these two people hate the other person's job. It works out great in a partnership that they can divide their roles. In a sole proprietorship, the person who hates interacting with people has to interact with people. The person who hates doing numbers has to do numbers. It doesn't work out quite as well. Um, also, if the business uh, fails, oh, I skipped over one. Uh, it's easier for partnerships to borrow money because the partners have more assets. When a bank looks at uh, whether or not they're going to loan you business, if you're a sole proprietor, they say, okay, if your business fails, can your individual house afford to pay off the business loan? We talked about in disadvantages for sole proprietorships. In a partnership, the same deal exists. You're at, uh, you still have to be able to pay off your loan, but now you've got three people with three sets of assets, three houses that could potentially be sold off. Um, so the risk for the bank is less, therefore they're more likely to loan you money. Also, if the risk um, of, of business failing is spread out amongst the uh, partners. So again, if the uh, business fails and a bunch of money is owed to the bank, these three people might be able to sell off you know, their savings accounts and their jewelry and their cars, but keep their houses. The risk is a little bit less for each of the individuals. All right, disadvantage of a partnership. Uh, working in groups can sometimes be slow because you don't always have the exact same idea or always wanna go in the exact same direction. So you have to talk things over and you have to come as close to an agreement of, of everybody involved as you can possibly get. Um, also, if you're the individual and you're in that business and you don't like what the business is doing, you wanna go left and the business wants to go right, you wanna focus the bakery on baking bread and they wanna switch over to doing desserts, well, now you're part of a group. And if you're that individual who wants to continue baking bread at that bakery and everybody else wants to focus on cookies and pies, well, they can outvote you. And if you get outvoted, not like this hippo here, this would be a partner who would put in most of the investments. The hippo doesn't care if he's outvoted, he goes where he wants to go. Well, you're not the hippo, you're one of these guys. And uh, you're going to have to wind up doing a job that you don't necessarily want to do. That's a partnership. All right, well, thank you for joining me today for Economics and You. I hope you learned something today, and farewell.